Peter, you've traveled to lots of different places as well because you weren't really in one place at one time. And I also know that because Matt shared in his story that he moved around to a lot of different places. Mm. Uh, Could you quickly just go over some of those places that you went to, like just naming them and picking up where you went to? As I said, went from Adelaide to Renmark, back to Adelaide, then over to Port Lincoln, which is what I was mentioning there. Then I went to be a manager on my own at Malala, which was a small town north of Adelaide. Right, a bank manager. Bank manager there. Wow. Wow. And uh, I was there a couple of years. And then quickly went up to Gove, Northern Territory, um, which is Nullamboy in another term, mm-hmm. on northeast Arnhem Land and uh, on the Cape, looking over to Queensland. So I was a bank manager there in a fairly large town, but uh, the only bank in town. So it was quite stressful, but I was learning a lot on the way there. So, um, yeah, um, if anyone's ever gets a chance to go there, it's really good. Because I have mates agrees with me, but a bit of trauma for the kids as they sort of had to leave schools and leave classmates but go to another place. But mm. I think it builds a bit of resilience. Would you agree, Matt? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 But there are stresses in there and you're away from uh, family and you just have to wait for holidays to see them. But um, mm. Mm. Yeah, it makes it special when you do return to Adelaide and sort of see the family. Mm. But um, yeah, there are things in um, in all my sort of jobs that sort of uh, sort of stretch me. But looking back in Gove there, there was an Aboriginal organisation called YBE and they were actually uh, came to me for a big loan to do some um, leasing for, for vehicles so they could actually employ their in, Aboriginal uh, members to do work for the mine. And it was all agreed by the mine and they would pay the money through YBE and then to the people there. So I was there doing the biggest loan of my life mm-hmm. with a group YBE, but their board of directors were 12 local elders from different uh, clans in the area. And I remember sitting down with my suit, it wasn't a suit, just good trousers though, on the red dirt up there. And getting all dirty but just uh the director there sort of talking in uh you know the local language to them and not hear sort of westpac and they're not here agc and they're not here peter and then million or something like that so i knew he was on the right track and then my bosses are saying when's this deal coming through but it took a number of meetings as you can imagine it just took months and finally we got the deal and it was a big celebration when they got these trucks and they actually uh, could be employed and do the work there which is a good initiative i thought mm. Mm. so something quite unique i look back at with a bit of pride so then it was time to come back to we'll go to Darwin and we went there with the kids again. Mm-hmm. But um, I'll just cut that short. It was good there too. But at age 40, I just felt I was getting a bit tired of the bank. And nothing wrong with banking, but they just really demand a lot of marketing and you had to sort of on sell things. So just time for a career change. And I went financial counselling with Somerville, a local organisation there, not for profit. Okay. And I did financial counselling, which I just really loved. It was just something that hit my passion. You're almost on the other side of the desk with someone helping them against the banks and to negotiate their way out of trouble. So I really enjoy that. That was good. To, right. Yeah. How do you do that? What What does financial counselling look like? Well, you have a box you? of tissues for a start. Mm. A number yeah. of people come in sort of totally emotional and you just say, look, I can help you and I can negotiate with the banks on your behalf, see if they can stretch out the payments or something like that. But there's usually a way to sort of get out of it until people recover financially and sort of get back on top of things. So. Yeah, I just love that sort of job. Mm. What were the types of things that people were coming in with? In in recent times, um, I just say like there's um, uh, the, the easy pay. You know, you can sort of instead of waiting, you can just sort of pay for it now and sort of pay it over three installments. Oh, it yeah, sounds yeah. good and it's easy, but people go out and get about fifteen of these loans and then they've got no money to pay for their food. So we just have to negotiate that out. Of, but I mean. People just do funny things when they're under pressure or when they're marketed to. So um, you just have to help them out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, from Darwin then, it was, we just felt after the family had moved back, our three grown kids moved back to Adelaide, that, um, yeah, it's time that we went back to Adelaide as well to see family. So we, we did. We went back there. And then I got a job with um, local state government organisation, Homestart. Mm-hmm. And Again, a unique thing with my experience of Indigenous folk, I did what they call the Nunga loan, which is giving home loans to South Australian Aboriginal folk. Mm -hmm. And that had never been done before in South Australia. And to Homestart's credit, but there was over 400 Indigenous families got into their own house in South Australia. And I hope sort of set a precedent for others who thought that they'd never get a home loan if they're Aboriginal, but now they can, you know, and they they do. So another good initiative. Yeah. Nothing to do with me. I just was a mechanic of all that and just did the nuts and bolts, but um, good to be part of it. So Yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. Thank you for watching this short clip of Life Bursts. You can like, subscribe or follow for more or head to rawcut.com.au.